Okay, so welcome everybody today. I am going to start off by telling a story. So, um, most people, they see tattoos as either creative or distracting. Um, in my case, I looked at it as something of beauty, something of grace, creativity, um, imagination. So it enticed me to get one of my own. And throughout that time, I didn't realize that there was a connotation that came with the idea of tattoos, not only outside of the regular spectrum of living, but also in a career space. There's a lot of discrimination that goes on along with it, a lot of hate, a lot of judgment, a lot of criticism. So I'm going to try today to debunk that for you. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about discrimination of tattoos in the workplace. So my first tattoo that I got is obviously right here. You can see, you can tell by the red flag, or in this case, my red shirt that I have tied around my wrist. Um, I use this as a symbol of uh, attention. It's an attention getter, something that people look at first. And uh, like this, this is an attention getter. Something that either creates awe or something that creates shock. So what I just want to get into first is that I know a lot of places, professional settings specifically, they don't condone this type of art or quote unquote calligraphy on your body. And um, I just think, I, I write about this because I believe that a lot of uh, professional settings are too harsh on this stigma that tattoos are a symbol of just disrespect, inappropriate behavior in the workplace. You are considered someone who is essentially beneath the average person. You are less smart, you're less uh, creative, and just overall, uh, Rebellious, I guess you can say. Um, in correspondence to my own experience, while I had one, I didn't feel threatened by this idea of discrimination because of the fact that my career path sort of revolves around the idea of creativity and professionalism and how they can clash together and make something beautiful. Um, so if your parents ever told you that once you get one, you'll get addicted, then you definitely should believe them. <laughs> um, according to the website, Tattoo statistics of, uh, in millennials aged 18 to 35 now are leading with the adoption of tattoos uh, with 47% and following with Generation X age is ages 36 to 50 with 36% and baby boomers at 13% along with those who are older ages uh, 70 plus uh, which are at 10%. So uh, I'm sure I can relate to the uh, to those amongst the audience who also have tattoos. I, can, uh, I too can relate to the specific topic since I have a very really revealing tattoo on probably the worst places I have to put on my body in terms of attaining a professional job. I call it the worst because of the fact that the form is in many cases the first thing that catches people's eye. Whether it be if you're working at a supermarket and you just have your sleeve rolled up and you're giving someone their change. That could be a, a totally different perception to the human eye. Or in terms of a professional setting, where you're shaking the hand of a potential investor for your company. Um, I believe that the new generations of youth are starting to change the game and how tattoos in the workplace can affect a job opportunity. There are more people with tattoos now that are trying to earn well-paid jobs. Excluding college grad students from being in professional workspaces is harmful to companies because they're not taking advantage of uh, intelligent prospects. Um, <clears throat> 45 million people in the, US, in the US have at least one tattoo. That means that's, uh, that's three in 10. So it's, it's a lot more common now than people assume. Just because you're hiding it under your arm doesn't mean you don't have it. Um, Many people feel discouraged when looking at possible job opportunities because of the fact that they possibly have visible or inappropriate tattoos, as told by the 
The Celtic Tattoo research shows that 37% of uh, managers believe tattoos limit career potential. Therefore, a company disqualifying you for a tattoo is legally within the right to do so. I think that's crazy. For example, people that specialize in marketing and law, people that are specifically catered to, whether it's a professional marketing or in the sense you're working in a law setting, but you're in a marketing position. Um, if you're a marketing professional that specializes in something like law, clients will seek a level of relatability and professionalism that may not be found in a gang reminiscent calligraphy tats on your knuckles. Many people think that there is still hard discrimination of tattoos, but not exactly. The negative stigma against tattoos is slowly dissolving, I assure you guys. Um, in fact, tattoos have become much more accepted in today's world. Um, recent surveys have shown that only 4%, 4% guys, of tattoos in individuals claim to have suffered discrimination at their workplace. Surprisingly, in the year 2015, up to 520,600 uh, companies changed the dress code of their staffs to allow visible tattoos in the workplace. This change in policy, liberty, uh, this change in policy, liberty for staff to showcase their piercings or tattoos, presents managers with more freedom and flexibility when hiring, and helps to create a better public relations and retention rates of staffs. In the case of specific professional career settings, for example, marketing people, again, in the Bocard uh, Communications Group case, marketing departments are filled with people who embrace creativity and are very accepting of tattoos if they don't already have several adorning their bodies. <laughs> For my transition, um, I'm gonna talk about how uh, tattoos are slowly making their way into the daily uh, workspace. Um, but this doesn't mean that discrimination is being eradicated anytime soon. Um, in one study, 86% of students with visible tattoos at the University of Tampa are of the belief that they would encounter more difficulty finding a job after graduation. 89% said they bear in mind how tattoo size and location can alter their career options when uh, drawing a tattoo. And like I said before with my own tattoo, I thought at first that it was a great place to put it, but in reality, in my opinion, as many others believe that want to work in a professional setting, this is not the place to get it. Um, in a poll study, a good majority of Americans don't find tattoos and piercings unprofessional. However, a large portion of shoppers would possibly change product shopping habits if they felt a business discriminated against staff with tattoos and piercings. Um, it has been recorded that there is a negative bias towards people with tattoos because they are perceived as less intelligent and attractive and more rebellious. Apparently, there is no overt, overt pr protection for employees with body art. And finally, for my last transition, tattoos have become increasingly more popular, so much that employers have started to, to reconsider their biases they have towards people that have them. And for my conclusion, employer standards should become up to date with their social norms of society at large, and so they don't miss the opportunity to have competent and intelligent new members incorporated into their workspace. In my opinion, as we, as the next generation, should be excited that we're changing the career game and its rules, and creating an environment that is open to people um, of all shapes and sizes, along with their intricate tattoos. From your cool barbed wire ankle tat to the simple name on the simple name tattoo that reminds you of a loved one every time you look down at your palm. Thank you. here, so I'll just tell you what I thought. Um, I think you want to do the reveal of the visual after you get started with your uh, 
attention device and you've got the object on your arm there to draw attention to what you're doing there because uh, because in essence you've already revealed the subject and it doesn't really feel like you are getting the impact that you want from that it just doesn't work as well it needs to be staged a little bit differently the subject is identified uh, and uh, you do have a purpose statement although your purpose statement basically says I want to talk about this that's about the most generic statement that's almost like saying I want to inform you about this it's it's a little non-specific as to what it is you're trying to do although I did think that you narrowed down the topic in the in the opening so that was effective I, you, know, you, you were very clear about labeling transitions in the presentation I didn't hear a very clear identification of the preview or the um, the structure uh, at the beginning of the presentation, and I thought that was a little bit problematic. Uh, I think you justify your topic pretty well. I do think you um, have an, a, an excellent amount of research in the presentation and that you cite it pretty effectively. I do think you missed some uh, easy opportunities to add some visual materials to the presentation because you've got a whole bunch of statistical information in different parts about you know, the number of uh, people in different age groups that have tattoos, the number of people in different businesses who felt discrimination on this, the number of businesses that have made changes in their policies. Every one of those things probably could have been easily visualized with uh, uh, one of those bar graphs or pie charts or something like that, and it would have had a more lasting impression and made a bigger impact on the uh, presentation uh, than just the two pictures that you have in the background. Uh, the one guy with the arm sleeves basically is staring over your shoulder for the first half of the speech and then we've got another picture of a woman with uh, similar kinds of tattoos uh, in the second half of the presentation and that's about as engaging as it gets and I think you need to be a little bit more uh, interactive with the material that way. Um, you do, I, I think you're reading a little bit more than you want. Uh, let me rechange that. I think you're reading a lot more than you want and you need to remember that you're talking to us, you're having a conversation. There are a couple of places where it sounds like you basically think you're describing your speech to us. For example, I heard you say, you know, in two or three different places, well here, for my transition, I've got this. For my last transition, I've got this. For my conclusion, I've got this. And it's like you're telling us the parts of the speech instead of making the speech. And, and that's, you're drawing attention to the fact that this is a, a mechanical process. Sometimes I explain it this way to folks. Uh, it's a little bit like any skill that you go through. You, you, we go through different stages of ability. When we first learn a skill, it's a little mechanical that we have to go through the things. It takes a while for it to become natural and, and something that's easy for us to do. So we do some of, the, some of these sorts of mechanical things. Did you guys, when you learned to drive, did you, did you guys know the SMOG acronym? Did they give you that one when you were learning to drive? Signal, mirror, over the shoulder, go when safe. You know, that was just one of those things that they used to teach us when we were learning to drive. You signal, you check your mirror, you look over your shoulder, and you go with when you say. And I remember learning to drive, I would do that. You know, okay, here's the signal, go over the shoulder, check the mirror, you know, all that kind of thing. And you do that enough times, and then you stop thinking about having to go through SMOG, and it's just like you just do it naturally. That's kind of the way you are right now. You're, you're thinking about the S, and now let me get to the M, and here's the M, and now here's the O, and you're paying attention to those things instead of making them a natural part of what you're doing. And that's something that just takes practice. I think that that would help quite a bit. Uh, the, like I said, the content is very good. I think there's a lot of information there. I think, it, I think it's organized, but I, I don't think that you did a very clear job telling us what the organizational pattern was. And although you identify transitions at the end, I'm going, well, what about what was going on earlier in this process? And it feels like you just missed a couple of key points there. All right, thank you.